so often I see that people stop using them because they're not picking up the way they once did. So I wanted to talk about a really important part about having one of these, which is cleaning and maintenance. So today is going to be a little bit different because I see these in homes all of the time. I happen to have one and it is a Roomba vacuum. And so often I see that people stop using them because they're not picking up the way they once did. So I wanted to talk about a really important part about having one of these, which is cleaning and maintenance. So you're gonna see the ugly side of my Roomba, but this is the reality of what they look like after a while. So I've already spared you and pulled off the hair from my brushes, and there's a couple of very quick and easy ways to do this. If you're a seamstress and you have a seam ripper, grabbing one of those and just slicing through in a couple of places will easily allow you to get all of the hair off. Another way that you can do it is just get a pair of scissors and slice through. You can also use a letter opener, but if you do not have one of these tools, you can find them on Amazon, but it's built to go over the whole roller. And what it has is these little teeth that are pointing this direction. So when you slide it over, and it probably won't take much off because I've already done it multiple times, but do you see the hair that catches in the teeth? This really helps get your Roomba completely clean. So use these on the brushes. That's one of the first things. The other and it just popped off, is exactly what you need to do. Most people don't realize that these pop off and you can collect all the hair that ends up collecting in there. See, I've still got some. So that's another quick tip on those. The same thing with the rubber brush. You'll want to take that off, run this under some hot soapy water to clean it, but make sure you're taking off this end to collect any dust or hair that's collected there. Now you can see mine is nasty in here. So I am just going to go ahead and take a wet wipe and clean that really well. I'm also going to give myself a new beater brush. And again, you can get a full kit with filters, a new brush, the roller, and the cleaning brush. This whole set I think comes for about $12 from Amazon. So I replace it once or twice a year depending upon how much I've used my Roomba. But this tool especially is the most useful thing out of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this and all you have to do is honestly get that little screw right out. It pops up. And the only reason I do this is after a while you could see the shape of it. It started to uh, actually goes sideways. So when it's spinning, it's not collecting the corners anymore. So you could see the shape difference of how it started to shift. I don't know if you could tell, but it's much more rounded where this is going to get the corners better. So it is good to swap them out every once in a while. And again, do you see how the hair just catches everywhere? So make sure you're getting all of those little spots. And then you could just put the screw right back in. Something else to know when you do replace the brush is it has an octagon around it, so you'll want to make sure to line that up to the post. So if you're having a hard time getting it on, it just means you haven't lined up the correct shape. Once you get it lined up, it pops right in, and so does the small screw. Now this is all pretty basic maintenance. Nothing too exciting here. Where it does get exciting was something I just discovered with a client the other day. Her Roomba stopped working completely and it's because this wheel was not spinning anymore. So I had had one of these before where all you had to do was pull this wheel and it popped right out. Mine doesn't do that, nor does hers, or at least that's what we thought because there's no way to grab it. Get yourself two small flathead screwdrivers Come near the wheel, don't press very hard, but just use it a little bit to get a grip and start pulling straight up. Did you see that? It pops right out. Now, I know this is gross. Do you see how much hair is trapped in that little cleaner? I'm mortified, <laughs> but look at, oh my gosh, I can't even get it out. Look at all of this hair that was trapped under that wheel. Oh my gosh, okay. So let me get past the gross part. Look at that. 
But here's the other thing that was amazing. Do you see this little wheel? If you have a hard time popping it out, use the flat head. But just gently pull it and this wheel pops out as well, meaning you can clean this whole thing super easily. So this was something I had never heard before. I didn't know in cleaning. You can now rinse this off. You can clean the sides of these brushes. Look at all of this, you guys. Oh, I wish this wasn't on. <laughs> that all came from one little wheel that had caught in here. And there is a small sensor. So once you get this stuff taken apart, go ahead and take your wet wipe. Wipe everything down as best you can. This will allow it to run like it is brand new. Get all of these little sensors that are all the way around it. Just give it a nice, good cleaning. Get inside here. Now something I like to do for my filter is very different. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. I will take the filter out and I don't submerge it, but I do run it under some hot water just to clean it. So, yikes, I didn't realize this has gotten so dirty. You just don't realize how much this is cleaning up. We run ours just about daily and you don't realize how much it's picking up until you go to clean it. So for this portion, as you know, you pop this open to empty out the reservoir. My filter has been cleaned as many times as I can possibly clean it. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one away and get myself a nice new filter. But before I do, I'm just gonna wipe this whole inside out. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and put a little brush in here. I just find that you wiping with a little Clorox wipe is sufficient, but I do get into all the grooves as much as possible and then do a really good thorough shaking. If you have canned air, that also helps to just go inside and loosen up the dirt. So take that can, blow out everything from the inside, and that will make for a much, much cleaner unit. Now for the filter, for the most part, they're very universal. If you have one that's not fitting well, you can still just kind of guide it in. Putting it the right direction would help tremendously. So now you have a nice new filter, but you can run these through the dishwasher. I used to do that when I had a dishwasher. Our little old home does not have that, so I don't get to do it anymore. But now the inside is clean and ready, so I can just slide that in. I'm gonna see if I can get this just a little bit better. So we can slide that. And that wheel is beautiful and clean now, so you just snap it right back in. I don't know if you heard that. Now look how easily that's spinning. Totally free spin. And then this, you just guide the post right back into the hole, gently push, and your Roomba is ready to go. So now with my brushes nice and cleaned, I can pop that in. And as you know, there's a square here. You just have to guide the square into the side, and then the channel rests here. Do the same thing with the rubber. The rubber beater. We'll have to spin it around until it finds the square and then it pops in and again that chamber sits flat and now I am ready for a very important part. So I hated the marks that I was getting from my Roomba running into furniture and running into walls. I'm going to show a different color but you can get dark gray, black, get some felt and cut a strip that is the same width as your Roomba and put it around. You can use any type of adhesive spray, double-sided tape. If you want to use any type of tacky glue, put it around. And as this is hitting your surfaces, it's going to be protected by the felt now. So All right. I've taken my strips of felt outside. I sprayed them with spray adhesive, which you know I love so very much. And I'm just going to go ahead and tack this on it's got me now. Oh my gosh, it's got me. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna come right about the halfway point and just wrap it around. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this side that is tacky. I'm gonna line it up just a little bit. And again, I'm doing this with pink so you can really see it. 
But now when it's bumping into things, this felt is going to protect your furniture as well as your baseboards. I am gonna cut the end. So as you know, your it has give, which registers to the computer. So I'm going to end where my felt goes right in that section. There we go. Now we have a Roomba that is going to be completely cleaned, ready to go, and it's not going to ding up our walls anymore. And not that you want to see this, but this is what I pulled out of my Roomba. If you've ever questioned whether these were efficient at cleaning things up, this is how much my Roomba picked up this was two days worth. Again, we're a household of a dog, a cat, and three people with long hair. So it's a little busy machine, but I love it. So let me know in the comments below, what did you think of that cleaning? Is this a helpful type of video? If so, I will try and make more for you. And if you are not interested in these, well, be kind in the comments below. Thanks guys.